God for Coffee. Good morning. Before we get started today, I want to take you out to the porch and show you something. Come on, let's go. Check this out. This is another case of never pass up a great deal. When we were going to uh, order our wood stove, we decided to stop at one of the secondhand stores in that town because we don't often get there. And look what I found. It's a 12 quart Paula Deen stock pot. Guess how much I paid for it? Three bucks. And we also got a set of three other stainless steel pots. Five bucks. So never pass up a great deal and keep your eyes open. Now, while Dan's working outside, let's go make some fire cider. Dan came down with a cold this last week and it reminded me that I wanted to try making a tonic for the cold and flu season called fire cider. Some people really swear by this tonic it's supposed to knock down all those cold symptoms and help you heal faster. One thing I need to tell you before we get started, I'm not a doctor. I'm not any kind of certified um, herbal medicine person. If you are on medications or you have a health condition, you'll want to research these because while this is a natural herbal tonic, it can affect um, medications and conditions that you might already have. Our first ingredient is going to be about half of a ginger root. Ginger is great for anything cold and flu. It's got antiviral properties for colds and flus. It's an anti-inflammatory. It is also a kind of a warming ingredient so it stimulates your circulatory system. One thing you wanna be careful of is if you're on blood thinners, um, you probably don't wanna be adding ginger to your tonic because it will further thin the blood. Now, I do want you to be aware that you can swap out any of these ingredients that you want. If there's something in here that you can't have, or that you don't want, just take it out. And you can add anything to this also, which we'll get to at the end, some different kind of things that you can add to your tonic. Now we're gonna add some horseradish. This is horseradish that I harvested last fall and I just processed it and put it in the freezer. I didn't heat it, I didn't wanna can it 
because heat would destroy some of the great properties that it has and I didn't want to do that. Horseradish uh, improves your immu immune system and so that can help you get over a cold or the flu and it alleviates um, respiratory illnesses because of that. It's anything respiratory, it kind of loosens up. In fact, in Germany, they have approved horseradish as a medicine for respiratory illnesses. Now let's add some onion. Onion is high in vitamin C. It's also anti-inflammatory. It's anti-cancer, it has antioxidant properties, and it is also anti-cholesterol. So it's got a lot going for it and is great in what we're doing here. Now we're going to put in some hot peppers and in my case I have jalapenos left from the garden that I just put in a bag and stuck in the freezer so I whipped out two of those and we're just going to chop those up and put them in our tonic. You're probably aware that hot peppers contain something called capsaicin. Capsaicin is another one of those warming ingredients that improves your circulation. It also has antiviral and antimicrobial um, properties. It's also got some vitamin C in it, if you didn't know that. Now we're going to put in some garlic. You want about a quarter of a cup of garlic. I just kind of eyeballed it. I did like most of a, a garlic cluster. Garlic has something in it called allicin. And allicin um, is released when you chop the garlic or crush the garlic. And so that's why we're really chopping it and crushing it here. Garlic is a food that is known for antiviral properties, um, anti-cancer. It's a food with known cardiovascular benefits. So it goes really great in a cold and flu time. The next ingredient is a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. That is gonna up our capsaicin level as well. And then to add a little flavor, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of fresh rosemary. And again, um, with these herbs, a lot of these herbs, they don't release all their goodness until they're chopped or crushed. So we're just going to chop these rosemary leaves a little bit and add those right in. Now we want to use some raw unfiltered apple cider vinegar to steep this in. I don't have my homemade apple cider vinegar ready yet. If you saw a couple of weeks ago, us juicing apples, and I said one of the uses for the pulp was going to be to make my own apple cider vinegar. It is still processing. Tomorrow I'll be straining this off and then it will, it will sit for another couple of weeks and it, will, it should be ready to go at that point. If it's not, I'll let it sit a little longer. But that's the best way to go if you have your homemade apple cider vinegar. But if you don't, you can buy raw unfiltered apple cider vinegar at the store. One popular um, 
brand is Bragg, and that's what I'm going to be using here today. It's going to be about two cups. I'm not going to fill it all the way to the top of the jar um, because I want to add a weight to it to keep some of those um, roots down and other ingredients down in the jar as it's steeping. You do not have to use a weight, but it will help to keep everything down in that vinegar if you do. Now, we're going to let this steep in a cool, dark location for two to four weeks, and every day we're going to shake it around. And what I'll probably do because I used a weight is just open it up, grab that out, shake, you know, seal it, shake it, put the weight back in it. And you're going to do that every day for two to four weeks. Once that's done, you'll want to strain off all of the solids and then you're going to add a quarter cup of raw honey. Now it's best if you use a local honey. You may know that if you use a local honey, then it also helps with local allergies and that sort of thing. A couple of ideas for other things that you can add into your jar are citrus. You can put lemon, you can chop up lemon and just leave the skin on because you're gonna strain it off. And the skin has a lot of goodness in it too. So you can chop up a lemon, you can chop up uh, an orange. All of that's gonna add more vitamin C to your tonic. You can also add a cinnamon stick. And that will, mm, that smells good. Cinnamon is loaded with antioxidants. It's also an anti-inflammatory. It also has antibacterial properties. It helps to fight bacterial infections and it aids with your cardiovascular system. So cinnamon would be awesome in a tonic. Now, how do you use this? Well, you seal it up. You leave it sit in the cupboard. Once you feel a cold coming on, or maybe you just wanna take a shot of it every day for the cold and flu season, but once you feel a cold coming on, go ahead and take it three times a day or so. Now, if your tonic is too potent, it's too spicy, you can dilute it in water and that will help a lot with the spiciness. Combined with my elderberry syrup, we should be really good for the cold and flu season. We hope you're having a great day and that your week is particularly wonderful. We wish you joy and we wish you peace and we'll see you next time.